Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to um, extract the data that you have downloaded from Digimap. Um, and I'm talking about master map data um, right now. There's a couple of bits of software we need to use to do this. Um, the master map data actually comes um, in a particular file format that cannot be read directly by ArcMap, so we need to use the software called Interpose to process and convert the master map files that we download from Digimap into shape files before we can load them into ArcMap. So I'm going to just talk you through the process of doing that now. I've already gone and installed the Interpose software onto my PC here and I've also already gone and downloaded the zip file which was sent to me through Digimap. Um, so we're ready to start doing the process of conversion to shapefiles. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go down to my start menu and I'm going to look for the Interpose software which is in a folder called Dotted Eyes. Um, need to double check that we're opening the right one here. Now we need to open the one that's called Interpose Digimap Edition Processing. And then we need to follow this wizard through, which tells us exactly what to do. So provided we follow the instructions, um, we shouldn't go too far wrong, hopefully. Um, so we're going to follow the first instruction. And the first thing that the software is asking for is a file called order of contents file. Now this file has been downloaded and unzipped already. Um, and this was downloaded with the, um, the file that we downloaded from Digimap. So I just need to make sure I browse to the location where that file is stored. So I need to just check that is. So there's the downloads and it's inside there. So I can see that all of these files downloaded um, and these were the files that were there once I'd unzipped them. So I'm first of all going to navigate and open or select and then open the contents order file. And then I simply hit next. Um, this next screen is just really telling us about the data that we've downloaded. Uh, okay, so we just accept that and go next. Um, it's now saying, would you like to process all the files? And actually that, again, is the default, so we want to accept that. Now this next screen, we need to make sure that we double check that we're actually converting uh, these files into ISRI shape. So make sure that box there is checked. And again, the output tables, we are just going to accept the default. So I'm just going to click next. And here we need to make some um, changes here. So we need to make sure that the temporary file, it's just a temporary file, so that, that we can just accept and leave that um, as the default. But the output file here, we need to make sure we put this somewhere sensible. Um, and ideally this is going to go back into our GIS folder, which is already on our drive, on our C drive. And there we are, the GIS folder, and I want to create one. I'm going to put a new one inside here. I'm going to create a new folder called Master Map. And that is going to be the output location. So I'm going to accept that. And that's going to be the output folder for the converted files to be stored in. So I'm going to go next. Uh, this log file again, I'm going to let the computer uh, decide where to put that and just accept the default. Again, I'm going to accept the default on this integrated transport network because we haven't downloaded that information. So we do want the computer um, to ignore that when it processes the data. Um, again, I'm going to accept the default here. And again here, I'm going to accept the default. And also on this final screen, I'm going to accept the default. And I'm going to hit finish. And with any luck, it should start processing and converting those files into shape files ready for us to then load into our map. So that looks looking quite promising. It says it's processing 13 files and it's going to take a few minutes depending on how many files it has to process. But in this process it's converting them um, or it's unzipping the files and converting them into shape files which means we can then load them into ArcMap. 
because when the files download, when the master map files download first from Digimap, we cannot load them into ArcMap without going through this process using the Interpose software. And this is obviously going to take a few minutes. This is quite a large area of, of master map data that we've downloaded here. So in the meantime, I'm going to just fire up the ARC catalog so that we're ready to start having a look at these files once they've finished converting. So we've got ARC catalog going there in the background ready and it's got a couple more files to process. So almost finished. And there we go, it's processed all the files and now we can simply exit out of Interpose. So that was a one-off operation which we don't need to do anymore. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now refresh my catalogue. Um, so I'm just going to refresh that there. So if I now go into my original data, I have now got my folder called master map which is the one I created which should now have all of the converted master map files in it which have now so all those files are now ready because they've been converted to shapefile to be opened up inside arc map but there's a couple more steps I'd like to go through before I actually start to open those up in arc map first thing I want to do is I want to create a geo database um, to store them in so I'm going to create a file geo database. Uh, I'm just going to call it master map for the time being. And I want to actually import those in to the uh, geo database before I start using them. So um, I'm going to go to the import and I'm going to import multiple because I've got multiple uh, feature classes. Now all I need to do is browse to that master map folder again. So original data, master map, and there we go. So I can simply click the top one and then I can shift click the last one and that will add all of them at once. So they're all added. And now I just need to make sure that I've got the output geo database, which is um, the one I want to go into, which is the master map geo database, and I'm simply going to click OK, and the computer will now go away and it should load those or import them into that new geo database that I've just created. And again, this could take several minutes depending on how many files we need to um, load in. So we're just waiting for that now, that little green confirmation. And looks like we've got the confirmation there, down the bottom there, saying feature class to geo database, and we've got the confirmation tick. So if we go into that master map geo database, there we go, we can see all of those have now been loaded in, and they've now also been converted to feature classes rather than shapefiles. So again, a way of managing these or organizing them inside the geo database is to create a new feature set. So I'm going to just quickly do that now. I'm going to call it master map. I'm going to set to the British National Grid and then I'm going to simply select or accept all the default settings and complete that. So really what a feature data set is, is kind of like a subfolder or it's a way of organizing data within a geo database. And this only really works for um, feature classes or vector data and it really allows us to kind of group together bits of data which are um, similar or connected data really I suppose. So all of these different feature classes go to make up the master map um, layer or the master map map. Um, so obviously there, there's a connection between all of those and often we would want to load them all together so we can simply drag them and drop them onto that master map feature data set and that's going to basically 
group them. It's a way of grouping them really together. And there are a couple of advantages to doing that. I mean, it, one thing, it tidies up the geodatabase so we haven't got stuff just kind of scattered all over the place. Um, because they're obviously all of a similar type of data and they're also all, um, they need to generally be used together. So it's, it, it kind of makes sense to group them together into one of those feature data sets. So now if I just go and open up ArcMap, um, we can now load the master map data straight into ArcMap. So I'm just going to open, or I'm going to just start with a blank project. So I'm going to go to my catalog. I probably need to refresh. Oh no, I don't think I do. So there we go, there's my master map uh, feature data set. Is that the right word? Oh, I can't remember, I need to just go back and check because, yeah, feature data set, there we go. So I'm gonna just literally drag. Now you don't have to drag all the way across here. You can just simply drag and drop here. And there we go, it's loaded all of them together. Now, as you can see, by default, it hasn't, it's just colored this group um, or all of these features automatically. It's just taken on the default colors. Um, and these will change, you know, they're never the same, basically. Every time you load data in it, it takes on a different color. Um, so what we can use, um, hopefully you've installed a style file when you ran the Interpose software. And now we can use that style file to actually color all of this data in a uniform way. So I'm going to just go through the process of doing that right now just to give you an idea about how that works. Um, and we're going to basically change the symbology. So I'm going to right click on the layer itself, go to layer properties and I'm going to now go to symbology. Um, what I need to do is change this to categories here and along the bottom I'm going to go match to symbol in a style. The other thing I need to do is I need to make sure that this field value here is set to legend. And then I'm going to simply browse to where a style file is. Now, in most cases, the style file is in the programs folder under arc map in a folder called styles. And it's called OS master map by dotted eyes dot style. So I'm going to simply select that and click open. And now I'm going to click here to match symbols and you can see what it's done it's pulled the symbol names from the legend and it's automatically added the colors that were already saved inside that style file and then I simply click OK so what I've got to do is work my way up the list and do every single one so I'm going to just minimize that one and I'm going to do the next one so again I'm going to category I'm going to match styles. I'm making sure that's set to legend. I'm then going to browse to the style file. The nice thing about this is, of course, the computer remembers the location that you were previously in, so it's a lot quicker the second time. Again, match. There we go, it's matched all the styles, and I'm going to click OK. And of course, as you see this happening, the map starts to change color as we define the styles from the style file. So again, categories match style, make sure the legend is set, browse to the file, open, again match styles and OK. You see this is kind of time consuming but once it's done this is a one time operation. Um, so again, same again, legend, I need to now go to match styles, browse, As you can see, we're starting to see the map change color as we go up through this list. So, okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to browse and I'm going to select that. Open. Oh, I went to the wrong one, so I need to go to Properties, Legend, 
browse the style file, open, match symbols, click OK. So we're almost there now. So categories, match, browse, open, OK. Categories, match, browse to the style file, match the symbols, click OK. So I think we've got a couple more to go. Can categories, match, browse to the file, click OK. Match styles, OK. And the last one, so we go to there, match styles, browse. Let me click OK. And there we go. So if I just have a quick zoom in now, we can have a look at what we've done. So you can see we've got a kind of a fairly unified colour, um, which kind of makes the map a lot more presentable and useful. So a couple of other things we can do now. We can group this together, this layer, all these layers. So we can select them all, and then we can simply click on the group. That means we can collapse that group. And again, this is just useful for managing data and the layers inside ArcMap. So the other thing we also can do is we can create a layer file from this, um, which is useful if we want to reuse the map and all the styles that we've just kind of created. It will, the layer file saves all the st styles um, for reuse in another location um, elsewhere. So I've already created a layer file here, so I'm just going to overwrite and just make sure that I've saved that. Um, so this means I could reload this whole map exactly as we've decided all the colours are in a completely new project without having to go back and make all those connections again. So it's a really quick way of kind of capturing and saving all the styles uh, inside there. So yeah, that's a, a quick tutorial on how to um, convert master map data that you've downloaded from Digimap into shape files using interpose uh, load them into a geo database um, put them into a featured data set and then load them into arc map and also set the styles for them